about like Patrick Melton because he wasn't successful until he started basically showing my show. And like, does he have the dumbest fans? Yeah, they're so easily led. It's so, it's so sad to listen to Melton fans. These are people who would have joined Jim Jones. Not that Patrick Melton is anywhere near as talented as Jim Jones. He's not. But like they would have fallen for Bitcoin scams and death cults. Because I gave Patrick Melton a very simple set of, of uh, what do you call them? Stipulations for our bout. Stipulations that, by the way, have to be figured out in a boxing match. It's not my fault Patrick Melton is too stupid to know how to put together a boxing match. You need stipulations. You need to establish glove size, headgear, whether or not it's going to be sanctioned as an amateur or a professional bout. Um, you know, wh whether, uh, you know, the, the amount of rounds you do, the minutes in the round or whatever. And then fighting is a business. Like, I will sell tickets to this. Patrick won't. Because here's the problem Patrick has, and he knows it deep down, and his fans do too. Patrick doesn't have any fans. I have fans, and I have people who hate my guts. I have people who want to see me beat up Patrick, and I have people who want to see me get beat up and hurt. None of those people care if Patrick dies. They don't. They don't care if Patrick gets hurt. They don't care if he has a heart attack in the ring, which at his size, he very well could. That's another thing we have to do. Sign waivers. He has to get a physical. They won't let him in the ring if he does that because they don't want, you know, whoever does, whatever venue hosts the event does not want a guy dying on their watch unless they're fully covered. And Patrick, people die in boxing all the time. And people your size could, I, I mean, this isn't even me doing a comedy show anymore. I know the sport, Patrick. You could die in there. You're remarkably obese. You're remarkably unhealthy. Now, would I feel bad if you and I got in the ring and I gave you a few body shots and you got gassed and your heart couldn't keep up and it ruptured and exploded? No, you agreed to get in the ring. That's one of the risks you take. If you get in a boxing ring, whether you're an amateur or a professional, you accept all the physical risks. One of them including you could die in there. It's very rare, but you could die in there. Uh, and I look, if I fight a guy like Patrick and he collapses and dies in the ring, Shouldn't have been in there. Shouldn't have been in there with me. You know, the, the Ivan Drago line, if he dies, he dies. So I gave Patrick stipulations that are going to have to be figured out if we do this. And the stipulations I laid out there all benefited Patrick. I wanted to give him all the benefits because he doesn't stand a chance against me. And that's not me bragging. It's just I'm experienced. He's not. And I'm going to have to make a show of it somehow. It will sell a lot of tickets. It is business. We have to do this as an event. You don't want to leave money on the table in something like this. Patrick's going to take a fucking beating. Might as well squeeze some money out of it for him. But I give him all the stipulations. They're all to his advantage. And then he runs away from it again. After he brought it up again, I didn't bring up fighting. I didn't bring up boxing. Just like Mersh brought up, you're an 0-2 boxing gay F word. And then I said, like, do you want to box me? Is that what this is? And then he goes, oh, challenging people to boxing matches is gay. I'm like, then don't fucking bring it up, you drunken, weed-addicted retard. Jesus Christ. Did he do a dab and have a stroke and forget he said it? And besides, I said about fighting Mersh, I wouldn't do it. It's not fair. Like, he's, like Melton, he's in terrible shape. And... Usually I would say I wouldn't, it's not fair for me to fight Melton, but he actually challenged. Mersh didn't actually challenge, Melton did. But then when you tell Melton, all right, cool, here's all the advantages, go ahead. All I ask is that if you knock me out, I get no money. And if I knock you out, I take all the gate revenue. But it's called a bet. It's called a side bet. When you're confident in yourself and you know you can do something, you offer side bets. Now, Patrick could say that part doesn't work for me, and I'd still do it. But he rejects to totally fucking do it and give them every advantage in the world. But when I start bringing up shit you need to bring up for a boxing match, everybody runs for the hills. You know, I start talking to him. I go, okay, we got to get a, uh, you got to get uh, licensed. You got to book an event center. Like you got to book an area. Uh, you have to get licensed if you want to box, either by USA Boxing or if you're doing it professionally, like obviously you just file for a license from the commission. It's fucking easy. Uh, you got to get a physical. Okay, then. Now, I have all of these things done. But, like, 
What size gloves are we wearing? Do you want to wear headgear? Uh, do you want to, you know, set any rules? What kind of rounds? What kind of minute rounds do you want? Like, you got to talk to people about this shit and set it up. So if John's willing to actually have these conversations, that would be fucking great. I'd love to. Like, dude, I get in the ring. I box twice a week. I fucking love the sport. It's great. It's like, it's like telling a guy who loves golf, like, oh, this guy really wants to golf 18 holes with you. Fucking name a date and time. Let's do the damn thing. And I'll teach you how to put the event on. I'll teach you how to put a boxing match together. Everyone thinks you can just go and do one. You can't. It's not allowed. You got to have, there's certain shit you, there's hoops you have to jump through. It's fucking America. You have to sign all kinds of paperwork and dumb shit. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, John would be the first guy who's actually had the fucking balls to contact me and talk about this. I would be so happy if uh, if John from Win by Two Radio decided that uh, that he wanted to box. That would be great. Thank you, by the way, Herpsy. Idolatry, witchcraft, and hatred. I want to read something to you about uh, something that was at the church that we went with um that we went with uh April and I went to Nick and Kayla's church. And you know how in that search warrant it said that the church people thought that we had a fucked up relationship and it was really weird and they thought that there was something freaky deaky going on with uh, the Ricadas and the Imholtz which they were right, we were switching partners. Um there was a there was a a, a passage read there was a, a gospel read when we were there that now that I know what the church, you know, thought about us and everything else, I honest to God believe that that sermon was directed at us. And it fucking worked for me because it was Galatians chapter five. And when they started doing Galatians chapter five, I started looking at everybody going, guys, this is what we're doing. Like, it, like, I'm not really a, a, a man of God, so to speak. But if I'm in a house of God, I don't want to, like, disrespect the big man, so to speak. So I'm looking at, like, the Ricade is like, Nick, remember, he's on the air about, I'm trad dad, I'm a Christian guy, blah, 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 blah. Biggest degenerate out of all four of us. And he's like, I'm a Christian guy, I'm a trad dad, and this and that. Who would have thought that the, the only guy in the group of four who admits he's an asshole and a scumbag is the best dad out of the bunch? Not by much. He did, I'm not saying I clear a high bar. It's a very tiny bar, but I could step over it. But like, I'm sitting here. The pastor is reading this Galatians chapter, and I'll read it to you in a second. You can tell me what you think if it was directed at us. And I'm looking at those guys. I'm like, guys, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing here? We get in the car. I go, Nick, you didn't think that was a little fucked up? And he's like, well, what you need to understand about the evan evangelical church now is that they're all prudes and they don't really understand like modern sexual relationships. And they've, they've kind of been like beaten down by society to believe that I'm like beaten down by society. They're just reading the fucking word of God. Like, aren't you a Christian? You believe in this shit. And Kayla's like, I believe God put us all here to love each other. And he wouldn't let us do that if he, he didn't have a plan. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm, I'm watching us. I'm like, we're really just doing the thing where we excuse the Bible verse and bend it to our will. Like we're doing a heretic thing. And I'm like, do you guys want to talk about this? And it was just, nope, next thing. Fuck it. Let's just move on. That was like a lot of big conversations that I was interested in having or that sometimes other people would be interested in having big conversations about the nature of the degeneracy. And everyone would just go, ah, fuck it. Move on. Let's not talk about it. Too uncomfortable. It's disappointing, but this was the uh, Bible verse. And you tell me if Nick and if the Ricada's church, now that we know that that Bible verse was like a, a or, or that, uh, that, that our relationship together was seen by the church as unholy and fucked up and weird, and it was part of the search warrant. You tell me if this Bible verse was directed at us or it was just a coincidence. Uh, you, my brothers and this is Galatians 5, 13 to like 25. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. 
Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, but the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. This, they read this in church while all four of us were there with the children. Not mine, mine weren't there. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I wasn't looking up to see if they were staring right at us when they read it. But fuck, now that I saw what I saw in that search warrant, I was like, oh my God, we were debasing the Lord in his own house. We were making a mockery of this fucking church. Like, what fucking garbage I am. And then when we all tried to talk about it later, everybody just put a pass on it. And I, by the end of it, I probably fucking did too.